told you in the manual to hold on, like select B or something like that, and it would start you back at the beginning of the last world you were on. Motherfucker. Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Ben, that's Jordan, that's Pedro, together with our powers combined, including you, helping us form. They're supposed to be Cocoon. Cocoon. Where are you going, Cocoon? Cocoon 3. Aww. Womp womp. Did any of you watch the Cocoon movie series? Wait, oh. Wait, that was a series. There was like, movie series. Yeah, or yeah there was like there was like there, multiple cocoon movies. Oh, okay. I thought you were like, did they make a series based on that? No, man, uh, I haven't. And so it was like, yeah, like in the same vein of like species, you you, you know, like the the nineties alien movies. Cocoon, <laughs> cocoon Voltron. That's horrifying. That's <laughs> Coco Voltron. It's chocolate Coke. flavored. Mm. He's like a bunny, except he's like. I don't know. He's, he's pregnant with chickens. <laughs> he's like, yeah, it's like a chocolate Voltrons. Oh man, why, why, why does the DEA get a hold of it, it, reasons? Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's Matryoshka Voltron. Might have been the filling. <laughs> just, you, you open it up, and there's just more Voltrons inside. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, we got a lot of stuff to cut through this evening. I want to tell everybody. I, I think I'm probably one of like seven people left that still uh, plays around like step one when I get a new Android device is I wipe it and put, you know, typically lineage on it and open G apps, you know, just to have whatever control I can have from the uh, Google data hoovering machine and uh, do it again. And, uh, you know, I got that uh, Nexus six and I was like, eh, lineage hasn't come out with the latest version. And it's been a while. I'm like, hey, I want to play with a new Android. So uh, I went looking around and see our Android, which is another ROM that's been around for a while. Like, oh, okay. I didn't know about this. I put it on. So I have like the latest version of Android. And maybe you have that at home. I was talking to these guys in the pre-show. Go back and listen to it. They got rid of the navigation bar at the bottom. You know, your old tried and true PlayStation buttons, you know, triangle, circle, square. And replaced it with gestures. So it has probably been a Adorable watching me the last day accomplish a basic task of like, how does this work? I don't understand this. And Every time I have to use Lonnie's iPhone, I like slam into that. I'm like, how do I do this basic thing? I want to leave this application. I want to switch to another one. Oh, you just got to swipe, swipe, just like, but, but, but buttons. <laughs> Give me a, there's a thing button. I can, there's a button I can press and it takes me away from this awful Here's like place. The big thing, man. I, 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 I'm going to have to pull out a guide because I remember seeing a thing in the introduction of like, there's multiple like three three finger yeah like yeah. Mm -hmm. advanced stuff like make me a sandwich type things that i don't even know exist but yeah i wonder that's all about it could what? we get like morse code gestures in, in android where if you go like boop, 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 boop. you know there's <laughs> a website uh it's called like morse code chat and it's just a chat room that forces you to uh speak in morse code do the dudes and uh, yeah, yeah. Right. It, it, it's got like people sitting in there chatting with it i'm like more morse roulette I'm like, that is so obscure and weird. I'm down with it. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure not people are that obscure. It's just the, the, the smug self-satisfaction of the people who can speak it fluently. <laughs> speak it? Well, speak it. No, 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 no. Uh -uh. I, want, I, I want to imagine a coffee shop full of people just going beep, 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 yeah. beep, 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 beep. They're, they're just saying dot. Dash dash dot 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 dash 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 dot dot dash 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 dot dot dash. That's 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 called the Droid Cafe at a Star Wars convention. Just go in there, sit down, start busting out some Klingon. Another thing, I got this done. If you've been keeping track, I've been working on like an OBS compile guide for Debian twelve because it's about to be coming out and it'll work with current Debian testing. And it's kind of a series thing because I want like that base there because we're going to be covering some stuff uh, with like jack audio routing. You know, I got a couple of plans with OBS and I need there as a base. So I'll have that out. I had to edit a thing because I needed to put in the, um, this happens sometimes. I'm like, oh geez, I'm going to get this YouTube comment of, um, I think somebody's going to bring up because I do it differently than they show you on the official OBS wiki guide. And uh, for my own reasons, and I realized after watching that, I'm like, that's going to be the first damn comment. Like, um, are, are you unaware that there's an official one? Like, yes, I am. Arr! So, um, yeah, I had to go back and redo that. But, yeah, it, it's cool. I'll have that out. Uh, 
put that up Friday when I post everything for everybody to have on Patreon, taking a really look at it. Check my work. You're the first line of defense to save the unwilling, the unknowing. Like, you got that wrong. You're like, cool, we need to change that. So, how about you, uh, Jordan? You've done a couple of things this week. I saw earlier in Discord uh, this week, you were at a a festival of music or a show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I got, I got uh, to go see Vader uh, for their 40th anniversary tour. So I got to watch uh, three bands, Decrepit Birth, uh, Cry Sun, and yeah, Vader. It was a good show. Uh, I, hadn't, I hadn't seen any of them live, and I hadn't really heard of... Uh, I, I heard a little bit of Cry Sun, and I've, I'm vaguely aware of Decrepit Birth. Uh, so they, they all put on a good show. It was, it was a fun time. Then um, next day, I had the house to my house myself, so I'm like, I'm just going to go out and watch movies. So I saw the, the D&D movie. It was, it was pretty good. Give it a solid three chairs. Wait, fun, you're allowed fun, to go to a, a movie by yourself? Rock. Yeah. People need to learn that. <laughs> uh, like, oh, it, it was fucking stupid though, because it's like it's Tuesday matinee, right? So they have like the the cheap movies in the afternoon. I'm like, yeah. I'm I'm gonna go pick a movie that no one's gonna see, Ooh. and uh, at a time no one's gonna see it. And lo and behold, the theater was like relatively packed for like three o'clock on a Tuesday. I do uh, 11 a.m. on Tuesdays usually. There, they they only had there there, there was either like the 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 1 p.m. screening, which I like, I was too late for because when I went to go buy tickets, it was like 1:15 or whatever. Mm. And then there was the one after that. So, like, yeah, I imagine if I probably went to the earlier one, I could have dodged that. But yeah, whatever. That's pretty good. How about you, Pedro Mateus? Not very much happening here this week. Uh, it's just been stupidly busy at work. NHS things. If you're in the UK, you know what's happening. It's uh, yeah. There, there's a lot of work that's being dumped on us despite us not being entirely aware of what's happening so that that's that's been my week and whatever free time i can spare i've been playing apb and, uh, I, I was about worlds. to ask how many hours do you have in uh that this week <laughs> uh this week i have like 13 hours <laughs> yeah no it's basically every like if i can squeeze an hour of it i will because i really like that game it's not a very good game i've mentioned this before it's not objectively speaking it's not a very good I, game everybody but everyone like knows you're there for the community <laughs> aspect of it right no <laughs> it's for the customization and uh, the shooting is kind of shit but it has rules and i kind of enjoy the rules not so much the actual feedback of the shooting but i like kind of like it <laughs> all right okay <laughs> All points bulletin. Do you think we ever get like all horse, all horse bulletins? All all donkey bulletin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All 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 ABB. All Budo bulletin. Well, there's no bulletins about the horse because it was reported missing and nobody cared. It's the Steam Linux update oh, of the week. All right, we got we gotta get into my vibrating Spartan Did two my... battle armor. Oh, now we got it. All right. Anyway, that's going to be fun. Uh, note to yeah. self. Yeah. Somebody remind me tomorrow when I'm editing. I'm like, I need to add that effect. Oops. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, it, it's time for you to get your vibrating suit on. Yeah. You can finally play Halo on your Steam Deck. Uh, well, I mean, you could before, but now uh, multiplayer kind of works. Uh, they had an EAC update. This is from uh, HaloWaypoint.com. Uh, they're saying that um, there, there, so there, there'd be a couple issues. Number one. If you select disable easy anti cheat, it actually enables easy anti cheat. And if you select uh, <laughs> enable any easy anti cheat, it disables easy anti cheat. So you're gonna want to actually click that disable button to enable it. It's it's very confusing. Um, campaign crossplay at the moment does not work. If you are on a Steam Deck and your friend is on a Steam Deck, that's great. But if you want to play with someone on Xbox or uh, Windows, uh, no no bueno just yet. Uh, also. Uh, if you're going to be playing on the Steam Deck, you may want to update your controller settings to say prefer gamepad, because otherwise, when you clear up for multiplayer, you're going to get thrown in with a bunch of keyboard and mouse players who are going to fucking slaughterate your ass while you're on a Steam Deck. <laughs> so uh, yeah, make make sure you queue up with only controller players. Yeah, I don't know about you, lot, but I'm I am curious. I'm curious. Uh, I have never played a Halo game. I mean, I know what a warthog is, and you know, I've watched the robot chicken. I know that's kind of what I know. Oh no, I take that back. I've watched the uh, all the trailer cut, like the Halo movie, effectively, because mm. I didn't realize like how deep the lore was in Halo, which is it's quite extensive. Mm -hmm. I, I'd be down to play it, man. As long as we could get like a, you know, if you're familiar with the robot chicken, like a floppy pixelated penis mod, yeah. I'd be <laughs> done. 
Uh, it's uh, whatever uh, the one that came out for Windows Vista. Apparently, it's Halo Two. That's the one I played. I got to the bit where you drive the Warthog, and I'm like, oh, oh no, 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 we're done. <laughs> but apparently, there's a lot of people shouting, and then they have been shouting ever since the Steam Deck came out, and ever since Proton became a thing, that they wanted to play with the uh, great green Tin Man in space. So that's that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Halo, like having played the first three Halo games, they're pretty fun. Uh, so I'm I'm glad to see that they are available on Linux. I don't have to buy an Xbox in order to play them or install Windows or any of that nonsense. You could already play it offline, the single player. Yeah, yeah, but like, <laughs> yeah, who, but who wants I mean, to do yeah, that, right? <laughs> no. I I I, I want to play with friends. I I want I want to do meet meet the Master Chiefs. Maybe, and you know what? Maybe we can do that. I mean, it's in the realm of possibility. Who knows, man? Maybe they'll put like Halo in a humble bundle or something like that, and we'll end up with a. No, no, you just gotta, you know, it's ten bucks a month for Game Pass, bro. Just oh, um, bra, bra, bra. Oh ah, man, maybe that'll be the right way to play um, The Last of Us because uh, well, that's a Sony game. Not that's Sony, not gonna man. be on the Game Pass. <laughs> well, maybe I'll, I'll get the Sony Pass, bitch. <laughs> Oh, oh! You can get the 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 PS5 one that they're going to be releasing a handheld that competes with the Steam Deck. Uh, that's just a PS5 remote play thing. <laughs> awesome! Looking forward to it. I, I mean, bring I mean, this up oh, since man. Naughty Dog says the Steam Deck support is at the bottom of the list while trying to get The Last of Us up and working on that little thing called a PC. That's right. This game. Uh, all right. You know, before the release, like there were indications that this game was going to work on the Steam Deck from both Naughty Dog, co-president Neil, and Valve. Because uh, one day before the game's PC release, Valve posted a new promotional image of the Steam Deck website showing a montage of games running. And guess what? Last of Us Part 1 was alongside the likes of Hades, No Man's Sky, and of course, Stray. I was like, all right, all right. That's pretty dope. And I think like Clue 1, lads was if we roll all the way back, is, like, they didn't even send out review codes for The Last of Us. Like, nope. that fucking tells you something. Like, the only time in history that I'm aware of that a game didn't send out review codes and the game didn't have some fucking issues was the latest Doom. The first Doom. The most uh, recent uh, 2016? Yeah. yeah. Not, not, you're uh, not Eternal, though. You're not, you're not talking about that one. No, no. Uh, the, the, one, the one before that. Yes. The first new dude. Yeah, Bethesda With for Vulcan. a while very much liked the whole n- no, no one gets codes early. Mm-hmm. Did they, they? They did hand out review codes for um, Hi Fi Rush, right? No. I know. No one no? even knew existed. That thing dropped. Yeah, no, yeah, that, yeah, 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 that was a stealth release. No one knew it was coming. Right. right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so I mean, like, yeah, but, but Bethesda's been been known to do that, and like, I, I mean, Hi Fi Rush had like a pretty pretty well. Like universally well, well received launch. Okay, uh, mm-hmm. to put to put a, the diamond point on it, then a game people knew was coming out and didn't yes. get codes <laughs> there. <laughs> uh, but even Naughty Dog, Naughty Dog's like, hey man, we got a hot fix coming out. You know, we're aware that there's problems, and you know, Steam Deck, it's uh, we're working on it, and uh, it's just kind of way down there on the thing from our perfectly working PC port that we're clearly aware uh, has got problems. To the point, uh, I, I looked at the patch and it's kind of a whole lot of nothing man like they're like we're, we're going to include some diagnostic tools like really, really? yeah i got, gotta gotta figure out what's going on uh, <laughs> to, we can figure it out maybe you guys can here's the debug console yes yeah, s- send, send, send us some telemetry please <laughs> we can't we can't you know we're, we're we're sony we can't afford computers to test our game and and I mean like I, I like honestly they're saying oh yeah you know we're we're not going to focus on Steam Deck until the actual game is fixed you know that's probably going to like sort seventy five percent of the issues on on yeah. the Steam Deck period maybe and yeah maybe, you, maybe focus um, on getting the the game working yeah if you uncock the port that you did I'm sure Valve and the rest of the community will be very happy to get Proton up to shape to run your game for you like they already have. Here's the thing. This is getting got me thinking, man. You know, because uh, this is not new. I mean, PC ports uh, historically have been like you forget. Like, fortunately, I dodged that bullet, man. Like, um, Horizon Zero Dawn. 
was absolute gar- garbage when it got released. And your traditional wait time is about six months. That's uh, when the game started getting better. Spider-Man, I bought that day one. Absolute dog shit. Um, I was the only one having problems with it. Six months later, hey, I could run it. It runs fine. What about uh, Data Boy? That one have problems on launch? Data Boy? God of War? Dad of God boy. of War. <laughs> Dad of Boy. Yeah. Boy. <laughs> uh, the Tilt game. Uh, yeah. That was, I, I'm going to say that that was playable even by my standards. You know, okay. it didn't have any like game. I mean, I'm going to say as far as like a PC well, port. Well, well, one out one, of three though. That's not, yeah. that's not good odds. That's not, <laughs> that's not a, a passing grade. It's not good with this. And it's got me thinking, man. It's got me thinking, man. I, I think I want to get some opinions on this. Get your opinion at home. Their opinion. Leave a comment if you're watching this on YouTube. Let me know. Uh, would it be a good practice to get developers to list like the not like recommended or like minimum? I'm talking about like the exact PC specs they use to test and verify the game. And I'm not talking about like, oh, we used a water. I'm talking about I want the MOBA, I want CPU, I want GPU, I want SSD, I want driver versions. And if you think this is crazy, if you've been playing games on Linux, you're absolutely familiar with ProtonDB. It is indispensable when it comes to like, oh, do I need like a little squirrely hack to do A, B, or Z, or does this even work under Linux? And if you were there from the early days, you're like, you know, everybody, what would you get? You would get uh, like Strider's level of like, no, everything's perfectly fine. Everything's acceptable. I'm like, what do you consider acceptable? <laughs> you know, it, you, you get a stable 15 at... <laughs> You know, 720p sometimes was on, on low, but perfect. I mean, and uh, what they did, which I was very happy about on ProtonDB, is they get a system thing that you can voluntarily get in and it'll scan your system and it'll tell you what CPU, GPU distribution and the like that you're running. Now, I would like to see something like that because um, that dramatically increased the quality of reports on ProtonDB. When you're able to look over to the right and you're like, what video card does this person have? What CPU do they have? What distribution? What version of Proton do they have? Like, okay. So, like, I'm. I I, th- I think there's like a there's um, if if you if you do it from like the 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 game developer side to the mm-hmm. players, I think there's a there's a scalability problem because there's only so many combinations of um. Well, there's only if uh they're they're going to be testing on probably on a like a variety of hardware on like. I'm not. I'm not going to say they're going to have like a high-end AMD, Nvidia, whatever system, but they'll have like a they'll have like a gradient or something. They'll they'll say like, oh, we ran it on these three computers, or whatever. Um, and I'm not sure how much how useful that information necessarily would be. I think like when you, when you're drilling down, uh, yes, that that's certainly useful. But like, I, 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 here's I, what I, I, I don't, want. I don't here's, know here's how the real reason I want it, Jordan. I want something to be able to call bullshit on them. <laughs> I want well, you to say, okay, you've made this run and you found it acceptable and it wasn't crashing this, this, and this, so I can reproduce this and I'm going to get the same effect. Is that what you're telling me? All right, let's go do that because it'd be great for YouTubers. I'm sure Steve over at Gamers Nexus would have a field day with shit like that. <laughs> yeah. But I, but again, like the, the actual like utility of that information from like the, the four or whatever systems. And like, what, what if it's, uh, what if it's like, um, um, the, like a like a large studio that tests on like a large gradient of systems. Are they going to post all of those all of those combinations? Or are you going to have to like pick and choose? Like, I, I'm not I'm not opposed to the idea in principle. I'm just like, h- h- how do you implement that in in, uh, a, in a usable way? Easy. Uh, make it, if you're going to have minimum and recommended, that's how you do it. Like, use the system that you've determined what is minimum, and use the system that you've turned what is recommended. Like, it's just show me the system specs. Because, like, if you're not doing that, what are you doing? Like, throwing the chicken in the circle and waiting for it to run around and die and then I, writing that spec down? Like, are you guessing? But so then what, what, what's, what's the use of, like, the, 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 the current set of recommended specs? Like, that's kind of what you're suggesting? Or, like, having, having yeah, like, a larger, having that a larger information with the recommended. And, like, you know, and instead of, like, but recommend- having that for Proton specifically? No, having it for the game. I don't care if it, you're going to, of course, they're going to be doing it on Windows. I want to know the hardware, the CPU, GPU, operating system, and drivers that they said, hey, here's what we played it on. This is what it works on, you know, for them to say, no, 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 no. Cause this is going to work other ways where other people saying, I can't get it to run. I was like, yeah, you're trying to run it with a NVIDIA 770. Plugged into your memory slot. Right. (laughs) And I'm just saying, Valve, you get an opportunity here. Like that, 
to radically increase your customer confidence. Because if I'm able to see, or if at least the developers are going to be said, hey, this is what I tested it on. This is what we confirmed is working on. That's a data point. And last week we talked about how important data points are. <laughs> to move forward and back from that and say, where do I sit compared to this system specs? Because we're not dumb. We're PC, especially even on Linux. I, this is this is going out to everybody. This is for Mac gamers. This is for Windows gamers. This is for you to be able to look at the system requirements and go, all right, that's what they were able to get. And then like set an arbitrary goal. This like, hey, the, the 1080p60. That's a good baseline, isn't it? And say, this that's is what, the one that everyone should be able to hit nowadays maybe <laughs> and i don't think it's out of the realm you know it's just saying hey back up what you wrote what you're going to write down anyway you know you got to write down your system requirements like back it up that's all i'm asking nothing crazy and strider was like hey man yeah it's a good idea for looters yeah it makes sense doesn't it yeah especially for looters if when you're dealing with those many different game systems and trying to aggregate it all into one client, having all that information centralized is a very, very good idea. Yeah. And here's the thing <laughs> I think it's going to help fight against is releasing games like The Last of Us that run like absolute wreck dog shit and going, we had no idea. It worked perfectly in our systems. I'm like, well, all right, well, what exactly were those systems again, Brad? Let's <laughs> yeah. go check that real quick. <laughs> like, oh, I mean, well, they, they, they can also just lie. Oh, it worked great. No, no, this is why you have to do it. This is a same same way they do it with Proton DB. <laughs> it does an actual system. You have check. to validate it yeah. uh, in some way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, 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 I'm kind of seeing Synthal's point. Good luck getting any any company to agree to that. But I mean, yeah, yeah. In, in principle, in principle, it's not a bad idea. <laughs> if you're Valve and you go you either to that or you don't sell your game, it's pretty fucking simple, people. Well, then they go to. No, they go to Timmy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're gonna bail over to the Epic Game Store. Yeah, no, they're just, well, they're, they're, cool they're, not, they're not bro, gonna. Are they also shit. gonna go to Itch? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the, they won't go to Itch. They'll most likely go to Timmy because Timmy will probably go. Uh, we'll give you this guaranteed payout. Uh, these year. are the same people that are willing to take a thirty percent cut. Yeah, they're gonna bounce over a system that. No, they're not people. Uh, if you're going to institute certain limitations like having to validate their own claims about their game, they might start to. I don't think they will, Pedro. <laughs> and if well, you're scared to hold people responsible the for wheel this of shit Booga that they're going to put out, uh, yeah, like, I think that, that says more than anything else if you're not willing to validate. like the, This is the AAA games industry where they'll just lie to people. <laughs> yep. <laughs> You guys are right. That's a horrible place, and we shouldn't try to do anything about it. I digress. Um, we should absolutely uh, try yeah. to improve on it. I'm just saying that yeah. might not work. Yeah, <laughs> gotta got explore the idea, worse than all. Because it works great for a community-driven thing, absolutely. Like Strider was saying, having something for that like that for Lutris would be awesome. But actually getting... Uh, big companies who are deep seated in their bad habits for years and getting them to change their ways. <laughs> I I, th I think like it, it might be, it, it, it would be useful if they have like a good way of like curating and presenting this information in a way that uh, like b better, better enables like good bug reporting. So like, I, I, I don't know, like I said, I'm, I'm not, I'm not opposed to this idea in general. I'm just like, there, 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 there's a lot of like sticky stuff in the specifics that need to be mm -hmm. hammered out. Uh, here, here's an easy way to make sure everybody make it opt in. Yeah, and then everyone will do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you make it opt in because then you're gonna get bonus points because people are like, "Oh shit, we can trust these motherfuckers." Yeah, the people who actually opted yeah. to this, like, oh, they they actually did the thing. Neat. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's gonna be like bounty points. I, 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 I mean, think, unless I you just have a raging like... hate boner against the idea, like, so, yeah, if it's opt in, it doesn't hurt anybody. Yeah. Unless you want to get creative with it. I'm like, I can come up with a way it hurts somebody. I'm like, all right, you do. Your oh, way. yeah. <laughs> and, 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 any, any system that has the game of element will be games. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's just how it's Steam, Steam and Valve proved that with the, uh, the trading cards. It's like, how can we exploit trading cards to launder millions of dollars on the daily? <laughs> I would like to see that all of branch across. And then again, like, even if you game the specifications, it'll be easy to verify. Because all the YouTubers are going to jump on that. People that there will be people like yeah. Gamers Nexus who would immediately go, all right, let's, let's build that system. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Done. And, and if, it, if it can make enough noise, sure. Yeah, absolutely. 
What do we have up next? Retro. Up next, we got some new games. Yes, uh, Van actually got to try this one. I downloaded the demo, but I haven't had the chance to try it. Formula Retro Racing World Tour. Uh, it's um, it's an early access. It costs about uh, 16 uh, pounds over here. But there's a free demo, and you should absolutely try it. Uh, I saw the um, the screenshots, and I saw the trailers, and I'm like, oh, that 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 looks very Daytona USA, like early Daytona USA on the Saturn. Absolutely, I. It looks all right. I I will have to give it a try. I mean, it's it's got VR support if you want to feel like you're in an episode of Reboot or something. Uh, <laughs> that price tag, though, is it's a little steep. Uh, 23 Canadian, what, that's like uh, 1999 US? Yeah. Uh, 1999. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I mean, it's got a demo. Mm-hmm. It's got a demo, but most importantly, mostly this is where I want to give you a be still my beating lover moment uh, when I saw this. Cross platform or just online multiplayer in a racing game. Who thought this would be a novel thing in 2023? But here we are. Um, I played around with it. Physics wise, it's a Formula One Tokyo Drift. You know, it Gran Turismo, but it's a Formula One car. I'm like, okay, sure, whatever. Physics in this universe work like this. I can live with it. Your car has a health bar, a damage bar indicator. So the more you bump into stuff, the higher it gets. And I was on my last lap, and right when I crossed the line, I, you know, the entire time, I'm like, I wonder what happens when I run out of bar and it gets to the max. Does my car just, like, stop? Found out, as soon as I crossed the line, I think I, like, came in six, somebody tapped me. Mm-hmm. One of the AI opponents did. And my car exploded into a ball of flames, but it was already in the demo thing to redrive the lap, so I just yeah. sat and watched my ball of flames drive around. <laughs> <laughs> does it does it do the thing where like as you take damage the car goes slower or is it just no like, it, it just because i, I was points. wrecking into all kind of shit trying to figure out you know how mm. any type of drift game you're like you got to get the butt slide field in mm. or you can yeah uh, the booty uh, scooty yeah there's a demo go play for it um, play with it it's all right like um yeah 20 bucks for that uh, I, for, I, for I, the privilege of early access for the privilege of <laughs> yeah, online multiplayer yeah, right? early access now like what are you what are you planning on charging because this thing already cost more than one hollow night that's what you need to think about a <laughs> b you need to build a community for this game this thing you know it's early access like at most of those things should be 10 bucks because they ain't 10 dollars worth of game in it right now it's like two fucking maps so yeah you want to build that online community you're not gonna do it 20 dollars right now just heads up and you know could be the, the whole sale. iron Steam price sales. thing is uh, help the early development with a steeper price and that it comes down when it actually releases. <laughs> yeah, but, but, yeah. But much to the chagrin of all the people who paid full price to test your game. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's the price to get in early. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, if you'd like to pay a different kind of price. Uh, Turn-based farming. Yeah, the the the, 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 the description for Hexlands, uh, the game we're going to be uh, talking about, it, it, it was an emotional, emotional roller coaster for me because it's turn based. Yeah, okay, I'm done with that. Roguelike, absolutely, you have my attention. City builder, fuck you, fuck off, and get fucked. <laughs> Seriously, why would you get my hopes up so much? Only to dash them in the exact same sentence. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that if if you scroll in their uh, their description, they have a they have a couple of promises of like what this game is not. And they're saying uh, there's no actual 4X mechanisms, uh, no no battling, and no multiplayer. Uh, but it's kind of a Slay the Spire meet Settlers of Catan or Civ type thing where you um, you have like a number of structures that you can build and the configuration of them in the hexes changes like how many resources get produced. Can we all just uh, one of, give uh, this building. a big boo? No one wants to join your fucking Discord to try the off out. Or try yeah, a demo. No. <laughs> yeah. Fuck off. And I'm that. looking at the right side there. It's like, oh, it's on Twitter. It's on YouTube. Official Discord server. Uh, how about your website? Mm-hmm. If someone wants to email you to ask for some keys for the game, how about your website? I got, <laughs> I got a Facebook page. <laughs> Facebook told me that I don't need to have a website anymore. I can just run my business off of Facebook. I got, I got more questions here. Like, how come the minimum and recommended have different storage requirements? How the fuck does that work? No, bigger textures. It, it auto detects your video it card. More textures. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Does it download um, more. I, yeah, right. I'm like, yeah. huh. 
It, it, I mean, it, games it used like, to do that. Um, Need for Speed World. It you used to, if you just downloaded the basic version, you didn't get the highest graphical settings mm-hmm. because it didn't download the high res textures. It just changes all the assets to like sparse files. So they're all like, <laughs> yeah, it's like 10 gigs, but like eight of those gigs are just like zeros. All right. Fair all enough. of the textures are completely uncompressed. <laughs> That's going to do it for Stevie. Yeah, we're, we're done. Coming up next, Intel, you're building up our hopes. Don't dash them, please. Please. The news are coming right up. No drivers to talk about uh, this week, but there will be graphics. Well, or Gra- the gra- promise of contents. graphics. <laughs> Speculation <laughs> of graphics. Let's go with that. <laughs> no, no, like sh- shocking graphic content here on Linux Gamecast. <laughs> Only available on our Patreon. So head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast if you want to see the spicy <laughs> LGC stuff. Uh, yeah, we got, we, so we got, uh, it's, it's like, like 10 Scoville units. It's like Sriracha hot, man. It's scorching. Uh, <laughs> you wondered yeah, where we, Sacha went. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, no, Sriracha N- Nutella, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got get into our Discord chat or get into our Discord by subbing to us on Patreon, patreoncom slash You can also get into our uh, Discord by getting to us subbing to us here on Twitch, twitchtv Uh We had a couple of people do that. Uh, Game Otron and who was it? I just had the fucking page up. It was Basil. Basil says, "Aye." Uh, that's what they use their Twitch Prime sub to say. Nice. So, <laughs> Yeah, good, good, good stuff. Uh, get into our Discord channel. You can RSVP to game streams. I'm doing Strange Brigade on Thursdays. Track Mania is happening on Tuesdays and Fridays. So if you want to, and you can win some games on Friday too. If you're hundred uh, percent, if you're good or bad enough, giving out like Street Fighter, mm-hmm. just like whatever I got laying around in my like humble pages, man. So yeah, yeah, come hang out with us. It's a good excuse, a uh, good crippling addiction, a retro video game. It's 11 years old. That counts as a retro these days with these kids, and um, runs on anything. Jordan, uh, Strange Brigade really pretty much runs. If you got a 3D capable system, you can get away. Yeah, with yeah, yeah. Strange Brigade. It's it's all it's all Vulcan like natively. So uh, yeah, it, it runs super well. The only the only weird thing, Q is use and shift oh, is grenade, and that just just makes no sense. <laughs> you know what cries an Intel integrated graphics uh, Vulcan? Right. No. Uh, how do people yeah. uh, if they want to come play with you? Just at, at you? In, uh, yeah, yeah, Discord? yeah. Uh, just just pop into the after shows, and uh, usually uh, Patrick or uh, Dancing Joe is in there as well. Shouldn't they let you know ahead of the time? You probably should, but we generally have slots open anyways. No, uh, no one who shows up actually mentions or uh, pings me anyways. So it's first. I, it's, the only reason it's I throw that out there because, like, you do, you always get the person who shows up like, "Hey, what's what's going on? Oh yeah, I want to play. Yeah, yeah oh, I got to download it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You guys play yeah. on me? Like, no. <laughs> well, there's that kind of stuff. We got a store's store. Store dot linuxgamecast dot com. Buy some t shirts, fanny packs, uh, tote bags, stickers, coffee cups, all that good stuff. I don't think we have fanny packs anymore. We should. Uh, we but, you know, no, the fanny packs were promised. We still don't have them. <laughs> They're in development, yeah. man. We got to test these on skeletons. On, 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 the, on the thickest of fannies to and make sure bite. that they... Uh, they're, they Skeletal they, uh, fanny, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is, is it the British fanny? Is it the American fanny? Is it both? You, you can find out. Uh, we got Wish Zones as well. If you head on over to linuxgamecast.com, put your mouse over the support button. You ha- can see the links to our Wish Zones. Zones. I have one. Buzzable. I have one. Pedro has one. Ven has one. Jill has one. If you send us some stuff over off of it, you can send us a little note that we got to read live on air. And if you send Ven some stuff, then you get your name in lights behind him. There's 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 still some room on the board. On the we we got to be careful. Like the green LED. Come on. Come on. You can do this. You've. Work. Uh, the, uh, wait, uh, right. <laughs> there we go found it the green led is like when i i go track down like whatever the short is so that's why it's normally in like seizure blinking mode but now it looks like it's just cutting on and off mm. so i just get it on static but hey we appreciate your support let us do what we do it's awesome it's a fun time come say hi in discord we're always hanging out it's always fun to get new people in and uh yeah that's gonna do that let's get right into the would have lost that bet, news. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we were well, talking big shit last week, weren't we? <laughs> <laughs> as far as we know, according to WCCF Tech, there will be a battle mage. There will be a battle mage. Uh, it'll be built in the four nanometer, um, whatever they're calling it. It's not FinFat anymore. It's something else. Yeah. Uh, FinFanny. But, 
<laughs> yeah, Finn Fanny. Uh, <laughs> well, well but, Finn yeah. Fanny, Bam <laughs> Uh It's uh, it, for the second half of 2024, and the Celestial cards are expected, also from TSMC, in three nanometers, uh, on the second half of 2026, if the world hasn't burned out by then. Uh, so yeah, no, everyone wants to see, uh, battle mage Intel. Absolutely. Even if they may look or they say that they don't, they do, even if for nothing else than just to, you know, feel validated in their naysaying in the first place. But everyone wants to see battle mage. We want to see what you can do after being so dominant in the processor space for as long as you were. Do the so, GPU thing. You has I, been. I, 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 I think I think to, to to add a little colory to that, we want to see Battle Mage at a reasonable price point. Because if they come out swinging, yes. they're like, yeah, you know, we're 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 you know the the rest of the industry has priced these mid range cards at five hundred dollars, so we're gonna do that too. Um, we 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 don't we don't know, but um, th- this this is certainly good mo- news. We've been we've long lamented the state of the uh, graphics card duopoly that is present uh, currently. So any any entry any anything to like drive some competition or just to like throw some monkey wrench into the existing like marketing infrastructure is player is three for the player best. three. <laughs> well, so uh, T- TSMC has said they have uh, they got the bid for uh, Battle Mage and Celestial. So mm-hmm. supposedly Gen three. Intel GPUs are coming, but no word on Druid. That was that was the fourth uh, iteration, and uh, yeah, so I guess that's still up. This in the is air. more than we were expecting, ladies and gentlemen. I think Intel, you know, you really get a second chance here when you think about it. I mean, if you math that out just a little bit, now let's get a fall in place, and let's let's be very clear: everything that could have fucked Intel with the Arc release fucked Intel during the Arc release. It was not pretty, and uh, he's like, I wonder what all could go wrong. And it's like. <laughs> <laughs> you, you mean all the Intel things? finds yeah. a way. Yes, uh, yeah. it, man. It, it, huh? it, it is uh, Murphy's law and Finnegal's law. Everything that can go wrong will go wrong at the worst possible time. Also, let's let's face it. Intel had some nasty karma checks to get cashed on their ass at some point, man. Um, yeah, that's yeah. True. Uh, so both AMD and Nvidia. I don't care what corporate waifu you have, AMD or Nvidia. They've shown nothing but just straight up disdain for the mid and low range with the new cards. They have. There's no way to defend this. Like we're looking at thousand dollar, nine hundred dollar cards, and I'm gonna say, like, here's Intel. Now they've learned some shit. They understand what it takes to get a GPU to the shelves and all the bullshit that can go wrong to prepare for it. And some drivers too, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and what Intel has to do right now, they need to be able to deliver a performance budget option. You know, think about it like this. Like if the A770, the 16 gig variant, the $350 card that's on the market right now had been able to match what they initially planned for with something that could compete with a 3070 Ti, if it was able to match that performance right now, today, you'd have a hard time keeping those things on the shelf. Why? Because a card at that price performance level doesn't exist in 2023. You can't buy it. It'd be in short supply like hell. That would be the card of like, oh, I'm building a new PC. Yeah, just grab one of those. Put it in. It's great. General gaming, open source drivers, 16 gigs of RAM. Yeah, use it for all the things. Unfortunately, it can't really keep up with a 3060 on a good day. Now, if they can get products on the shelves, not late 2024, I mean on the shelves, and I'm not talking about you released a fucking laptop in Korea. <laughs> it's or, technically or, 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 out, you guys. Right. To appease yeah. shareholders. I'm talking about boxed on the shelf second half of 2024 you got a chance to just eat a market because nvidia's already shown you man they're like what's that Four, I mean, 40, 40 50 500 yeah six, six gigs you're, you're happy with that right right come on um, and a- amd is just like <laughs> not released anything period yeah. so well amd's doing the amd thing of like well we want to respond to whatever nvidia's doing and nvidia's like whatever we're still yeah yeah, we're still dominant so uh fuck you (laughs) intel you got a chance like it's not three come on (laughs) and 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 like and again like ven said don't even need to compete with the top end you just gotta like fucking carve out like a not even a great a decent mid-range experience you can just you don't even need the mid-range at this point if you just have something budget that can you can justify the price that you're gonna ask for it People are just going to buy that shit. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I say they do it. Uh, I, I want them to do it. Now, if it's like late 2024 and you know that the end of 2024 we get an announcement about next year or something like that i'm like ah good good fucking luck but i I mean even even late 2024 nvidia's like hey we're releasing the 5000 series you want a 600 dollars for 50 30 that you see that that's if they can do like midway because nvidia of course is going to be announcing like whatever is going to be the five series but if you got something on the shelf people are like no, because I don't have another thousand dollars yeah. to spend on your video card in video. Yeah, I, can't, I can't take another mortgage on my house in order <laughs> right. to afford to play video games. Right? Like <sighs> crazy, crazy, crazy. Uh, good news, everybody. Though, let's talk about AMD for a minute. They released something not necessarily gaming related, but this is the Al- Alevo Alve- Alvio Alvio <laughs> Ma Thirty Five. MA 35D. Ma 35D. Ma, ma 35 <laughs> Media Accelerator. <laughs> AV1 video encoding at one watt per stream. This thing is absolutely dope as hell. I want one. I have zero need for one because it's for the data centers. But if you've been wondering, like, why did AMD buy Xilinx? This is why. Because you're looking at $50 a stream. And how many streams can it do on one, one of these low cards? $1,600 worth, baby. Sixteen hundred dollars. AV one two six four two six five thirty two ten eighty p streams. Now this is encoding, right? Mm-hmm. So you got to think yep. about that. Um, you know, ten eighty p four k. You name it. This thing can deliver at it. And now is this uh, aimed for the home user? Absolutely not. Because at sixteen hundred dollars, you might as well just get the GPU with the AV one encoder. You know, get some extra butter on it. <laughs> but. <laughs> This always comes back to something that we've talked about uh, a couple of times on the show is, you know, a thing that NVIDIA or AMD will never make as a consumer version of this, like a PCI by one that's PCI Express by four with like one or two encoders on it. So we can just add that functionality to an existing system. But again, at, you know, we're talking at like, you know, a 199 price range, both AMD and NVIDIA would like, we'd like to sell you the whole GPU though. Now, uh, when I think about this, though, I look at this and I'm like, this is surprisingly affordable. Uh, it's got like super low latency. It is capable of doing 8K 30 and it uses incredibly little power. Mm-hmm. My first yeah, thought is one watt for 1080p 60 right? is pretty good. <laughs> My thought is like, hey, Twitch. AV1. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, hey, Twitch, you going to dump a bunch of your old encoder cards for cheap on the internet so that we can fix them up? <laughs> Most of uh, encoding at scale uh, outside of custom hardware at YouTube and Google is done on CPU. Oh, interesting. Uh, yeah. well, that, that's, uh, would, that's Google, though. Yeah, that's wonder... Google and that's Twitch. Uh, I mean, uh, Google does, uh, they have their own custom AV1 encoders. Like, they've mm-hmm. devi- yeah. designed their own ASICs. And uh, this is interesting from like Xilinx, like uh, our audio is being brought to you by Xilinx right now because I have a Xilinx FPGA in the uh, sound card I have and Jackbox, but that means this is upgradable later on and they can mess around with it and play around with it. I wouldn't know about like home use. No, there's no way to justify uh, it. Uh, the, 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 this is 100% AMD For that AMD price, it's very difficult because well, yes, it, you know, eight millisecond uh, latency uh, one watt for 1080p stream, yeah, uh, 60 what, what, FPS. What, what, what are you doing in your house that requires transcoding of 32 independent 1080p? Starting 64? my, I, I, I am bootstrapping my YouTube competitor. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> then, then you yeah, need starting a, a YouTube card, competitor right? or like, starting yeah. your own TV station. <laughs> like realistically with a, you know, decent, like five gig or, you know, yeah, five gig. Cause you can get five gig fiber these days. And, uh, one of these hell we could. I mean, it would be completely viable to like do your own live stream, like service, right? Yeah. Maybe not even, but you know, if you just wanted to like live stream from whatever you were doing, right? And you could have 20, like, shit, man, you buy three or four of these. Yeah, you're good to go. I think it's pretty neat. I yeah. think it's pretty neat. The, yeah. the price isn't, but everything else about it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The price yeah, is, no. you say that, but I mean, for the consumer, for enterprise, yeah. this thing is consumers practically <laughs> free. Do you, do you think, yeah, do you think for that, enterprise, like, they're just going to buy an entire pallet of them? Yeah. So do you, do you think that like AMD is going to pull like a, uh, like an NVNC and can start like shipping some of this hardware on like future GPUs to like have like, here, here's a dedicated not encoder? because the FPGA Xilinx, uh, they're not cheap. 
Mm, yeah. Traditionally, FPGA. But, but, but like, yeah, I, I, I wonder though, like even just like a lesser version of this tech, right? Because well, they might uh, like a dedicated NVIDIA yeah, yeah, card. They, yeah, yeah, they, they might yeah. bake yeah. a piece of silicon. I don't. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, I don't think we'll ever get like an FPGA version on that. No, yo, yeah, for, for for sure not like this thing. No, absolutely. Um, but I mean, just for like acceleration for. Uh, for like, I look at like video encoding, like let's say you have to do transcoding or um, AV1 encoding to that effect, and you have some like the, 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 the fuck mothering juggernaut in that one little card at that price is like I wouldn't even know what to do with it. Like, start, awesome. start a YouTube competitor, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, right, start your YouTube competitor. <laughs> uh, so good news, everybody. Uh, Everspace 2 is uh, pretty much out. That's the thing. You can go play it, version 1.0. On PC, you backed it on Kickstarter back in uh, 2019, you know, available for Windows, available for Mac. Oh, shit. We said it was going to be ready for uh, Linux, too. Fuck. Okay. See, we forgot that we said that until <laughs> like four months ago and we tried to fart out a Linux port and Unreal Engine 4 didn't work out all that great. So you know what? Thanks for the interest-free loan. If you want a refund, you can get it. But you better hope it works with Proton. No more Linux version. Last minute. Ah. That, that's... Oh man. <laughs> remember, remember back when we were taught like this this would have been like early, early LGC like episode hundred ish. When like, oh yeah, Unreal Engine 4 is coming out. Oh my god, it's supporting Linux. Oh my god, Vulcan. We're gonna get all of these games on Linux, you guys. Oh man, how fucking naive we were. Mm. Oh, it's starry eyed um, and bushy tailed. The <laughs> latest changes that we don't have, they waited to the last minute. Like, they waited until a video post this week to mention this. And this is like previously, they're like, yeah, we're working on the Linux thing. It's all great. Uh, let's, be a, let's just be a warning. Let me see what they say. Latest changes, we won't have a native Linux support, even though we've committed to that many times. Haven't fucking acted on it, but we've committed to it many times. We did spend quite a lot of time and effort on a native Linux build. Still, it turned out due to the broken and complete nature of Vulcan implementation on Unreal Engine 4, despite us seeing several games that have been shipped with Unreal Engine 4 utilizing Vulcan, uh, dare say more complex than this. Uh, it runs a, a graphically complex, <laughs> get out of here, 50 to 80% performance compared to simply running DX12 Windows version in Proton. Yeah, Proton works better. Um, okay. This pisses me off for a couple of reasons. Not necessarily. I feel bad for anybody that backed it for that reason. Maybe, oh, unfortunately, you've had to learn the lesson that I've learned myself uh, about promises and Linux ports and all the Kickstarter and stuff. I don't even know if it was a stretch goal. But who this really sucks for is every single developer out there planning on starting an Indiegogo or a Kickstarter project, a crowdfunding, to bring their vision to real life. They want to make their game. They want to deliver it. And they do want to provide. A Linux version. Yeah, it's going to take some extra time. Maybe they're probably going to have to learn some new things, but they have the know-how and the time and the drive to deliver it to you, which we've seen with smaller projects, way smaller than this, and they've delivered Linux ports. Well, that person who's thinking about doing this, why even bother offering that as an incentive to do the Linux port? Because people like me, they're going to look at that and go, been burned too many times. Not going to happen. That uh, is the reason that I stopped backing Kickstarter games. All of the promises that just didn't get delivered. Uh, and, and, and at the end of the day, you're still going to end up having to play the game in Proton anyway, so don't go through the emotional roller coaster and just yeah. like, oh, hey, this game's cheap on Humble. I remember when it was on Kickstarter. Let's check this mm. out now. And I, one of the things, man, this is like the reason we require a working Linux demo to mention a project on this show. Because like it, it just like went crazy like way back in the day like when Kickstarter started rolling it everybody was a con I mean I, we ended I we must have been on some type of list because I was getting like four or five projects a week I'm like hey 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 yeah Linux all the things guys Linux that was like their magic word and uh, it was enough to one was like where's your demo give me that give me your demo tape bro running Linux and like wait what huh <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> So, I mean, you know, back who you're going to back and for whatever reason you're going to back, but stuff like this is just damaging. I, I think about the next person who's like, really would like to do the work and uh, develop uh, Linux native ports, but maybe that's just not in the cards anymore. Yeah, well, I, I, 
I, I think at this point, right, like you're you're pretty much better off just like shipping the Windows version and making sure that it runs well with Proton if you're going to be releasing on Steam. Um, we 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 we've I mean we uh, Strider brings up a good point. Like we've seen a lot of games that got released from the Kickstarter error. They just don't launch anymore on a modern Linux because they're mm-hmm. running like too old version of Unity. So. Like and, it, it, it's it's the it's the sad reality, but here we are, right? And it, that's the thing. Uh, even if they had gotten um, Unreal Engine four to work properly, it's going to be a lot easier and a lot cheaper in the long run if you let Valve handle your support. Now, because <laughs> that's I, the I, thing that Vulcan also does. Uh, I will on. say, I will <laughs> say though, Everspace two devs. You decided to do a Vulcan and a DX12 version. You could have just wrote a Vulcan version, and it would have worked everywhere. Yeah, yeah bro. DX12 is future, bro. Yeah, future. Bro. Uh, clearly, bro. the the emphasis was on DX12, and uh, you know, they, in their defense, like in 2019, <laughs> they probably drank enough of that Kool Aid. Because mm. you, okay, you think about like 2019, all the way back, um, my pre-pandemic era, right? The, like. Well, I mean, way back, really, because I know Pedro and I, we always noticed it. Uh, when Ryan Shrout was on PC Per, mm-hmm. that motherfucker would not mention Vulcan. Ryan, I love you, buddy, but he was like, DX12, and somebody would be like, or Josh, who would be like, what about Vulcan? He was like, no, no, we don't need to worry about that. It's going to be DX12. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like, you know, the thing that defines the standards that is no, compliant. Pedro. No, 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 Pedro, with- the Pedro, that's some Linux thing. It's, uh, <laughs> it's going to be DX12. <laughs> that works on Windows 7, unlike DX12. <laughs> let's, let's, uh, again, Str- Strider brings up the good point. DX12 support is clicking a button in UE4. Vulcan requires you to write some code, so. Shh. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the thing. And um, Microsoft's products like... Uh, Visual Studio. If you tab autocomplete to program your game, it's probably going to write a lot of DX code for you. A lot of it. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, there's a big price difference um, between when you have like developers developing a game versus uh, the idea people. <laughs> and the idea people aren't necessarily aware of uh, the things that exist. <laughs> well, and also they gotta, they gotta spend three times as much because they gotta they can't fill any of those roles, you know. Yeah. No. <laughs> so no ever space rough. But here's the downside with Proton is when that shit breaks, they're not gonna be able to fix anything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but the the, the reverse is. Mm. It worked, and we didn't have to do anything. So yeah, they didn't have to do anything. Valve handled all of the support, and uh, yeah, that's it, it's basically you get a free Linux port with none of the responsibilities. So yeah, that, yeah. That, that, you that get Valve to buy is- a game with zero support. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <sighs> bad, bad. Just don't promise. Whatever you do, just don't promise a Linux version if you're not actually going to deliver it. Well, how just about like not waiting until like uh, the week of release to bring it up? Yeah. <laughs> that, that, well, we, we, that's we thought, just the cherry on top of the shit. Unreal cake. Engine 4 has Linux support. We thought we could just click a button and it would be fine. It, it, it just really feels like, yeah, nobody tried until last week. I'm mm-hmm. like, wait, what? Well, oh, yeah, well, we did promise well, that shit. They got, Can you export it, one right We got to do well, extra they, well, they, work they, on top of that? They, they said they got in touch with the Epic people and they're like, yeah, but why are you using this Unreal Engine 4 shit? Now, fuck, fuck that noise. Uh, you upgrade your shit to UE5 if you want support. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Re- remember when we were all excited about UE4 being open source and that was going to like fucking make it super long term stable? Yeah, no. Well, I mean, they came back and they're like, well, it's, you just couldn't imagine. It's not like we could modify the code to UE4. I'm like, yes, you fucking can. Yeah, if you, you can. If you had competent yeah. people on your team, they could do that. <laughs> yeah, no offense. Like, the story is fine. very much source available. So, yeah, you can. That's out of the question. <laughs> Impossible, Pedro. <laughs> Listen, we, 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 uh, listen, there, there, there is a lot, there are a lot of software developers who are allergic to doing any sort of actual programming that falls outside their framework. This is a, this is a thing I deal with professionally quite a bit. It's, yeah. it's a bit of a problem. <laughs> um, but let's, let's talk about truckers born on a mountain, raised in a cave, trucking and fucking all I crave. 
uh, yeah, you gotta change gear, change gear, uh, change the server and uh, manage it your way on Linux. Yeah, uh, game server managers, specifically the Linux JSM client, has an update, version twenty three point two point zero. The two big ones are American Truck Simulator and Euro Truck Simulator two. You can now set up your own uh, dedicated servers using Linux JSM, which just makes it yeah, it makes managing the servers really really easy. Uh, they've removed uh, support for Mumble. So if you were using um, GSM to set up your Mumble server, keep the old version running because this one doesn't support it anymore. And uh, the uh, if you're trying to keep an eye on your logs for everything, they now have uh, added the uh, timestamp prefixes to the logs so you know where to look. It's very good. That's th I, That's actually a very solid update. Yeah, this is this is handy too because like um, if you're running your own dedicated servers, Steam CMD isn't like the most user friendly tool. So like having having yeah. something to like manage and make sure that things are kept up to date, it's it's nice to have. Uh, one other thing that this project does that I I love to see, I want to have more projects do this is shout out your new contributors at the bottom of the release notes. It's mm -hmm. always good because you know you got you gotta you gotta promote your your new contributors and make sure that like their their efforts are being recognized that's how you get more people to come into the project i love this project because especially if you're dealing with like an you know somebody who has experience setting up old game servers that are poorly fucking documented high track mini um, <laughs> this can take a lot of the hassle out of it and this is going to save you the headache of like trying to bother or even bothering to learn what the hell a docker is because that's usually like solution b i see of like here just download my container that i built i'm like who the fuck are you i'm not telling you here download it run it <laughs> this has got support for how many like over 100 game servers New yeah mobile. there's a, a list on their website it's not entirely obvious but uh if you click on the get started button it actually shows you the games that it supports mm -hmm. there's quite a few there and it's very very good to see i just wish more games had dedicated servers that people could use they're working on it and i mean you get monitoring you're going to get up uh, alerts it's got an updater built into it along with backup and console access mm -hmm. so i mean this is a well thought out piece of kit mm -hmm. yeah there you go uh, now, you can, now you can play your truck game you can honk, set honk. up a server for you to play trucks with your friends yes <laughs> so maybe you can't afford expensive civilization no, you can you can you can get the free one. We have though. civilization free. at home. We got civilization at home. Yeah, we do. We do. You can play it in a browser. Even that was from the last release back in 2020. But there's been uh, there's been some new changes since that last release. This is pre civ. They have version 3.0 out now. Um, the wrong big change. Wrong. Oh, <laughs> chat realm. It's not um, dealer mission. <laughs> chat, chat realm is not civilized. How dare you? How, How dare, dare you? Them? Yeah. Uh, but uh, the big changes are uh, code is now completely GPL v3. Uh, everything has been upgraded to C++ uh, 17, and now the Qt client is the only supported desktop client. Uh, there's a couple other fixes and stuff in there that matters if you actually care about the game balance of FreeCiv. You can peruse those. The links to this is in our show notes. It's just good to see. This is one of those like open source game stalwarts that have like been around for fucking ever. Yeah, I don't know if this counts as a screenshot, but you know what? It's better than 99% of the GitHub pages. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean the, that is kind of what the game looks like, so... It's, yeah, it, it's accurate. <laughs> what do we mean? I mean, I mean it's like o o OG Civ. We're not, we're not talking about a graphical titan here. <laughs> oh, Ninja, you're getting in everything these days. Oh. Ninja, um, please. <laughs> Ninja and CMake. <laughs> right? This is one of the reasons I'm doing the OBS thing. I'm like, we do not need to bring Ninja into this <laughs> organ relationship. Trust me on this. <laughs> Mesa, Ninja, all the things. <laughs> Isn't it like, yeah, it's like CMake with extra steps for why somebody needs to sit me down and explain. I was like, what? what I'm, I'm, is yeah, I'm, I'm sure like it's all, all the benefits of Ninja are like, if you are the developer, it's great. If you are the end user, this fucking sucks. I mean, yeah, I, if you got it tied into like an automated build system, maybe. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, that automatically pull everything down. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. I there's <laughs> got to be a reason for it, but it sure as hell isn't for building it at home on a single machine. <laughs> so that's what. That's going to be about, uh, this is really f neat, Jordan. Yeah. Sc Scum VM. Again, we're talking about like open source stalwarts. Scum VM has been around for fucking ever. And now there's actually online support for it. What? Well, for, 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 for one game, for, okay, for, for one game that actually you does. Children? It. It's I've, I've done this. Like those are CRTs. 
LAN parties with CRTs. That was yes. a reality, and they sucked. Carrying a CRT monitor around sucked. Don't let anyone try to tell you when this stout. It sucked. All right. 20 kilos yeah. of monitor. Go on. <laughs> yeah. So uh, back, back, backyard sports, which uh, consisted of backyard football, backyard baseball, and backyard uh, foot, and another backyard football. <laughs> uh, they were games that I believe they actually came with cereal boxes. Like, I, I, re I remember you got them from, like, Burger King or from, like, cereal. But um, there, there were sports games. Some of them had, like, actual land play. You couldn't actually play them over the internet. But if you had two computers, you could play baseball over each other. Uh, against each other. Backyard Sports Online, though, is a fan-hosted service for playing those games online, and it has uh, matchmaking making support, which ScumVM now also supports. You will need a Backyard Sports Online account, but, like, and this doesn't necessarily open up the door for, like, other ScumVM games to have multiplayer support. It needs to be present in the original game to have that, but still, this is, like, fucking crazy, right? Like, Scum, scum VM multiplayer, online multiplayer is not a thing that like, I don't think any of us expected to hear at any point. Do no. any of us know anything about like, what do you know least about rules wise baseball or American football? Ooh, that would be a toss up. I think that's a solid tie because I know fuck all about either of them. <laughs> you, like, I'm, I'm trying I, to figure out which one we should play first. <laughs> I, you, 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 would, you would need to grill me on the rules and then like score me at the very end. Cause mm. like, I think I have. My guess is that it's about like 50-50 with American football and baseball, but it could be more or it could be less. I have no idea. All right. Uh, I'm trying to find like some gameplay, but I can't tell which one is like, because when you do like apparently backyard sports online is like a thing, man. Like they've been going for a long, long time. Yeah. Right? The, the, the OG game came out in like 2001. So yeah. Like, and it's been on everything too, including like Nintendo stuff. So mm -hmm. we're now part. Oh, this, this is so dope. This is so dope. I want more and more of this because there are so many titles. I want like easy stuff, like easy to do, like scum VM type thing built into like even like browser games. Like I would love to have a thing where like multiplayer NES games or Mega Drive games mm. where we could just like all go to a browser with that ROM and like say, hey, connect us and we could just play and you know. One, one, of, one of the cooler Pokemon ROM hacks I saw was like one where you actually have like another person control the enemy AI. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, you like, I'm, I'm sure there's like all sorts of crazy shit for like Mario or whatever, where you could oh, like, so dope. yeah. Or like duck hunt where you could like have a remote player control the ducks or whatever. Uh, uh, like, player yeah. two could do yeah. locally. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, what, yeah. What do you mean? Like duck hunt wasn't multiplayer. You two people couldn't play that. <laughs> yes, it was. Yes, it was. <laughs> You know what? I yeah, I, I was late twenties when I learned that. Um Yeah. Yeah. I, I knew that at the time because my cousin had Duck Hunt and the if he was playing with the uh, the light gun, I was with the controller controlling the ducks. That's how we learned that you could do it. <laughs> I think the one that really threw me off apparently in the original um Super Mario Brothers manual, did you guys see that? That you didn't have to start back at the beginning of the game after you died? No. There was like a, you could hold down, like it told you in the manual to hold on, like select B or something like that. And it would start you back at the beginning of the last world you were on. Motherfucker. <laughs> God damn it. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> hold on. I got to go invent time travel. I'll be back. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Just slap the magazine into your younger self's faces like, Fucking read that. No, I just, no, just do, do this. <laughs> what? No, seriously, just fucking try it. Right. Just do it. Just leave right, that scribble fine. on a piece of paper and like see if you can figure this out. <laughs> Peace All out. Right. All right. Well, coming up next, you got to kiss your at symbol goodbye because we're going into the dungeon. Throwing chairs at Rogue. You're in the Peace. dungeon, baby. At times like these, I really wish I could like bust out sick guitar solos and just do the intro to Welcome to the Jungle. But instead, you get my really pithy explanation. Welcome to the Chairquisition, where we take a game, run it on a bunch of different Linuxes, and then uh, with a bunch of different hardware, and then give it a final score based on lawn chairs. One chair means that it's trash, four chairs means that it's gold. So much gold, in fact, that we're taking a look at Rogue FP, done by Jurax, Jurax Games. Done on Godot, you could pick it up for about five bucks. What is it? A blend of old school gameplay and new school controls. Experience a classically styled roguelike in a way you never have before in first person. We got to thank Yurax Games, Jurax Games for sending us some keys. 
and I get to go first this time. So uh, on Fedora 37, 64 bit with the R9 3900X and the GTX 1080 Ti, launches out of the box. It holds 60 at literally everything because it's, it's fucking rogue. Um, the soundtrack is three pretty pleasant dungeon synth tracks. I would have like, I wish they would have included some more because the soundscape becomes pretty monotonous after two hours and it's just the same do 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 do. It's, it's, it's well-written dungeon synth, but again, you just need, need more of it. Um, the controls are sanely mapped, although I'm going to call bullshit. There is no HK, HJKL control scheme. You fucking posers. This is how Rogue is meant to be played. Uh, the, by, which, by the way, the tutorial, which tells you the controls is kind of shit because it's presented to you as a book that you have to read and there's no easy reference for any of the stuff. Um, graphically, I mean, I've seen more intense GPU output from Vulture's Claw, but you know, simple as the aesthetic here. That's what they're going for. Not going to hold that against them. Fun wise, is it fun? Oh my yes. I spent a lot of time in class playing Rogue in a terminal instead of actually paying attention to people. Um, you get to bop around the dungeon, collect gold for your high score EP, and try to make it to level 25 and beyond. And as such, I unwittingly sunk about two hours into this. Uh, let's be real though. This is not a revolutionary RPG. This is pure nostalgia from the text-based days of yore. It does a pretty good job of capturing the rogue experience and translating it to a first person, uh, view. Yeah. Like getting attacked randomly by a bird in a door. Uh, it's, it's thing that happened if you're watching the uh, video version. Uh, yeah, I, I, it, it is literally just rogue. If you have played the text-based game before, this is that, but you move around with laws, then you can click on some stuff. The, it, it's not perfect, but it does a good job capturing the essence of it. I, I, I really enjoy it. I will say though, that the map generation could definitely use some work later. The maps just kind of become samey. It's all the same, like dark rooms and stuff. You'll get a slightly different tile set, but what you will mostly get is doors with dead ends at the other side of it. Now there's a search for secret door button, but I feel, you know, it kind of defeats the purpose. If like you telegraph a little too hard where the secret doors are, if you go through a door and there's a wall and you're like, Hmm, I wonder what that's about. And you know, to its credit though, in some of these tunnels, there are legitimate dead ends. So you're not going to find new paths all the time, but you know, still I, I had fun. It would, I, I, I like Rogue. This is like a fun new twist on it. If you are not a big fan of like the classic game, you probably won't like this as much. It might do something for you, but I, th I think if you're a fan of like OG Rogue, like I am, then you'll enjoy this. I'll give this a solid three cheers. Uh, absolutely. And over here on the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D uh, with the RX 6700 XT on Nobara, it launches out of the box. It also launches out of the box on the deck. Uh, it defaults to was controller mode on the deck, so it requires some um, reassigning in Steam input to get access to all the keys, but it works. Um, there's um, a certain problem with the, the default settings if you're running it with Gamescope, like you would be on the deck, because, um, <laughs> well, the deck pretty much requires game scope in order to maintain as much compatibility and ensure that if a game does freeze, you can still escape out of it by putting one of the overlays over it and just killing it. However, uh, once you start this game on the deck, there's a certain area of the screen that you can't put the mouse cursor on. So you have to cleverly navigate your way to the options menu and change from window to full screen mode. Once you do that, or borderless full screen, uh, once you do that, it works fine. Everything is uh, kosher. So, it, you know, I'm not saying you have to account for the deck, but you should just saying, uh, it's yeah, it's first person rogue. It looks appropriately retro. The music could use some work like Jordan already mentioned, but I, I didn't hate the uh, mysterious moody themes. Uh, and uh, yes, it is, in fact, fun. If you don't mind how simplistic and antiquated Rogue itself is. It does do quite a lot to improve the player experience. It's not just Rogue, but from a different perspective. Although that is very much the selling point, and I don't mind it. And I hope that that is a growing trend in making older games 3D or first person, even if maintaining the retro aesthetic. And if play, uh, playing Rogue FP uh, really makes me want a first-person shooter version of Teleglitch, please? But that's, that's for another time.
But yeah, no, Rogue FP does a very good job of bringing an entirely new dimension to Rogue and one that I very much enjoy. It could do more, absolutely. It, all games could always do more. But having just little things, like having proper sprites for the pickups instead of using the same red liquid-filled bottle for all the potions or the full plate for the armors and then you read the thing, it's like, oh no, it's it's leather armor instead. Huh. But so yeah, that that could use some improvement. But that is I a like what it's going. Though. Yeah, it is. It it always used the same uh, icon for to, to indicate. Look, it's an armor, and when you pick it up, you find out what it is. But now that you are doing it in first person, and you are introducing that more visual aspect of it, maybe you know update the sprites a little bit. But yeah, no. Uh, for me, three chairs. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, um, believe it or not, this OpenGL powered behemoth ekes out a solid uh, 60 FPS on my 3060 at consumer UHD 2160p. Very happy to see that. Window and full screen options, as bare bone as this is, are included. Good job. Can't rebind the controls, though. And I, I'm going to say it's a little bit of nonsense for a PC game, period. I've been doing that for a long time because uh, map is in. And yes, this was, you know, the DNA of these types of games are like top-down ASCII-based, whatever. This is 3D. Maps should be tab. Period. There's no question about this. And some thought went into this because your inspect button, you know, WASD is your standard movement, and your inspect button is Q. So, like, some thought went into this. So, it, it'd be nice to have the map be able to pull that overhead map up because sometimes I find myself using that to navigate instead of 3D. I know. Whatever. No autosave either. Learn that the hard way. Good times. Not going to hold that against the game, though. That was on me. Let's talk about fun. I don't really have nostalgia for the uh, 2D crawlers of old, but this seems to capture the simplicity. You know, I've seen them. I've played them. I just never fell in love with them. You run around, you kill shit, you collect prizes. All while hammering on that Q button, man, looking for the secrets. Got to find the doors. They got to be somewhere. I'll tell you where they're at. Pro tip, if you're at the end of one of these long, invisible hallways that light up while you're walking down, there it is. Hit Q and you get to keep going. And uh, you get to murderate emus? Leprechauns? I mean, it's got that going for it, let's be honest, until you get killed by a hawk or something like that. Uh, I played it a lot like I played the original Wolfenstein, like zooming around, like wrecking shit, man, blowing stuff up, ignoring the pickups for the most part, just like looking for the next set of stairs. And uh, it was kind of like by its default difficulty, what was it? Uh, Rogue or whatever the default difficulty was. Surprisingly effective method until like floor 10. Novice. Novice. Okay. <laughs> then like on floor 10, like I don't know what I ran into, but it was like some type of water monster. And that thing just noped me right out of the gate because I was like, oh, I'm just going to walk over this thing. Boop, boop, dead. And I'm like, oh, okay. And up until that point, like I didn't even bother looking at my health until floor 10 because even like running around like down dark hallways. I just wait till I bump into something, then I'd kill it. And um, there, were, there was really no punishment for that. I had plenty of health the entire time until I got to that one guy who just like nuked me. Uh, yeah, this thing absolutely delivers what it says it's going to do on the tin, though. You know, my only unsolicited suggestion would maybe reduce a little bit of the RNG between enemy types because uh, sometimes, like, I'll like one shot an ogre. And have to like get in a ten hit battle with a bird. I'm like, come on, man. Like, I get it. I get it. And there's arguments for and against all that. If you're into this type of nonsense, or maybe you want to experience that two D old school goodness in three uh, D, you know, some like retro three D, four ninety nine. You can't really go wrong. It's a solid game, even though I'm not necessarily into the genre. I'll give it a solid two shares, gentlemen. I think we all just kind of liked it, right? Yeah, like yeah. <laughs> a, a, a lot like most of the chief complaints you can make about this game are stuff you, you could levy at rogue mm -hmm. because like it, it is a fairly faithful reproduction of it just in first person and yeah, you know it, what i, I want to give you like okay because it does it does the uh pseudo 3d type thing like they did in like wolfenstein and doom mm -hmm. and i could give you extra props for uh when you kill something it just falls flat down like a piece of cardboard i'm like well done there's also rats that come and eat the corpses afterwards that run. Oh, that's yeah. nice. <laughs> yeah. and, and the rats, uh, the squeaking of the rats is an instrumental. There's, yeah, no, there's a lot of really nice details that were put in. 
and I'm a big fan of, you know, rogue and roguelikes and roguelites. So, yeah, no, this is rogue first person. It does what it says, and it does it yeah, fairly you, well. You you cannot <laughs> accuse this game of false advertising. Nope. Say what you will about it. <laughs> <laughs> and for the for the price, man, that's five yeah. bucks. Like, why not? Yeah. It's a solid like sport. Uh, I'd like to see rebindable controls because it is yeah. a first person shooter, and I think that's kind of a just expected. But I want to see the VI mode. <laughs> the VI mode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Or even if it's not HJKL, at least IJKL. <laughs> can we get an ASCII render <laughs> for the 3D version? Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, dude. Can we get like 3D tiles, like a 3D like at symbol? Fuck yeah. Oh man. <laughs> if they bust, if that they have that as, as an option, four chairs. Legit. Like, if I can, if I can, if I have to fight like giant letter E's, I'm down. Like, come Done. on. Yeah. All right. That's gonna do it. Coming up next. Turns out I was wrong. Uh-oh. One person cares about Atari games. All accounts as one. I, I prefer room temperature myself, but hey, it's the end of the show. Yes, you made it. Kudos to you. Uh, if you skipped this particular um, timestamp, what are you doing? Were you the person who sent us uh, <laughs> this bit of hate mail? Because if you are, well, we're going to have words. Uh, if you'd like to follow the same, um, you know, follow the example, uh, maybe, you know, include some more punctuation-y bits, but we'll get to that. Uh, go to latestgamecast.com, hit the contact button. There's a form at the bottom of the page that you got to fill. Uh, there's some caveats at the top. You should absolutely read them. If you don't, well, then that's on you. Wimmy, wham, wham, wazzle. Do you really want to taste it? Um, <laughs> yes, I want to taste the slur. Possibly, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to say our first entry in the 2023 longest sentence has been delivered. By Sean. Because we were talking about Ataris, and it was like, man, people don't want these old Atari games coming back. And Sean's like, shh, please. I'm not reading all that. Anybody want to summarize, take a shot at this? Uh, sure, because this, this was addressed at my comment. So, um, <laughs> like, this thing doesn't even fit. Yeah, the, 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 the gist is um, he's a big fan of the hardware. Uh, the v, he, he likes playing around with his VCS. He does care about uh, he does care about the old Atari games, although he doesn't mention which ones or if any or like whatever personal attachment he has to them. Um, and yeah, he's basically saying like he li- he likes his VCS. He doesn't care if there's like a lot of games or the few games. And 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 that's just him. And you know, Sh- Sean's Sean's well within his rights. I but again, I I feel like well, hang on, he he, does, the, he talks about popularity though, right? Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Uh, uh, he doesn't he, he doesn't care popularity. about popularity. He hates popularity. He doesn't care that these old games aren't popular, which I think kind of is in support of my point. Like en- enjoy them if you like if you like Breakout or like uh like Adventure or Pong or like Custer's Revenge or like whatever, like more more power to you, right? Like that that's that's your gem. I'm just saying that like the I guess my point was more the public nostalgia for stuff like Asteroids or Snake or whatever on 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 an Atari like console is pretty low. Like, I, 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 I don't, I don't think that's like a, a controversial take, but like, no. I, I guess, I guess Sean disagrees with me. Sean, oh, Sean, is, Sean is one of these fans. You. I, I just like to read a little excerpt of just the end. Uh, the Atari VCS is my favorite hardware. I love everything Atari is doing in my honest dif- uh, difference in popular opinion. That's just me. Zero punctuation. Yeah, no, there's no punctuation. <laughs> the, the whole thing has no punctuation. Hey, hey, hey. There, 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 there are quotation marks. Instead of, there's instead quotation of marks and apostrophes. Yeah. yeah. That, 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 that counts okay. as punctuation. <laughs> like, yeah, but but again, I I, 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 I don't I don't think like this is this is like a particularly spicy take. Like a- Asteroids is a perfectly fine game and all, but like there are better shoot 'em ups that have come out since then that yes. people like better and people I think it's would safe to say like more. gaming as a whole has, has evolved man like i said you can't manufacture nostalgia but fuck all of whoever owns like atari's gone though this is the whole thing like that's not atari you're playing your vcs is not atari it is a shell company that owns the intellectual property <laughs> right? info gray making the yes, corpse dance them. so what so here here here, here here's my here's my solve for that Chuck E. Cheese should just buy out new Atari and just bring it back into the fold. Cause you know, 
that 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 was uh, that was what's his name's uh, or, original company, right? I you lost the, me. The, the, the the Atari guy, like there 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 Bushnell? there's a who Bushnell, but Bushnell, yeah, uh, no, no, Nolan Bushnell, right? That's the guy. Sure. Uh, uh, but like he he was he was working for Chuck E. Cheese. Like there there there, there is a connection between Atari and Chuck E. Cheese. There I was but, in my mouse suit. Yeah, you, you, need, you, you need you need two DVDs and a floppy disk. We've watched that. Um, yeah, I, I I don't know, man. Like it's good, but I haven't seen. I think our biggest contention was like our, my biggest thing uh, was like they're trying to mine the nostalgia with like re-releasing like hundred dollar VCS cartridge games and stuff like that. And like the VCS was neat. We were all interested in it right until the minute like Valve's like, "Yo, we're we're doing a Steam Deck." We're like, "But you what?" Okay. Yeah. Oh, as it turns out, this uh, teeny tiny little handheld, which a lot of people teeny tiny was little handheld, he says, <laughs> as, 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 he, as he struggles to raise it. Yeah, right. I I just wanted to get it in shot without bumping the microphone. That was my well, concern. Well, it's so small, Pedro. But what do you have to worry about? <laughs> it's it's small. about as big as my face. <laughs> it's big, but you know what? That fucker is ergonomic. I will say, like yeah, for extent for extended play times, yeah. like. <laughs> like yeah, uh, just don't. Uh, my one gripe is um, the the touch pads. They suck for long playtime. Mm. Uh, but oh, um, I when I was playing uh, Torment Tides of Numenera, they had an interesting use for them. They used them as like a radial wheel for dialogue options, mm -hmm. which I okay. thought was neat. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and the typing yeah. on the, uh, the yeah, Steam the, keyboard. The, the, using awesome. the two touchpads for typing is really intuitive and very well done. Good job, Valve. So. Yeah, that, that, that was one thing that like the big picture mode like OG got like right. Yeah. What, what was the, the first Atari uh, the game controller? that you played? <laughs> Asteroids, actually. Okay. Uh, it was it was it was like a, it was like a modernized version of Asteroids. It came from a Scholastic book fair, and it had like multiple ships. You could have like different ships that you could unlock, and like some moved faster, and some had like different shot patterns and stuff. Yeah. See, for me, I'm old enough. When I say Atari game, I'm thinking 2600 on hardware, <laughs> which even and as a like Philips a video pack for me, but same hardware, <laughs> single digit age child. I remember we were at somebody's house doing something and they had, a, you know, the NES hasn't come out. And I think this was after like the fall of Atari, but, you know, they still existed everywhere. And somebody was playing Pac-Man on their a console and like I went and like sit down and I'm like wow this is dog shit because uh, I played Pac-Man at the arcade and have you seen because I watched a video of that not too long ago it was like it was like universally panned even back then like that so that was oh, yeah, I think, oh, the first one I ever played you know I don't think I've ever actually laid hands on an OG Atari that's yeah, probably yeah, no, not came with up. the Atari brand. The Philips I played ET on an original it. Atari as a kid, and <laughs> it made no fucking sense to us then. Uh, you know, you got to dive into pits, man, and like mm -hmm. rescue rescue ET. We tried to figure it out. Like it was a hand me down. You know, people were throwing them away. I played Pitfall. Pitfall was probably the best one. Uh, like mm -hmm. that resembled the game. You know, this is like NES time. You know, but uh, anyway, I, it, and we were playing like a. I think it might have been his dad's or something like that. And uh, that was okay. Did we play anything else? Uh, I think that was it. It seems like it wasn't a twenty six hundred. Somebody had one that was better than a twenty six hundred because it was had it like double the, the dragon 5, 800 on it. or Might whatever. Have been. And I remember, I was like, wait, I, did, I thought double dragon was uh, only on NES. Then I played it and like, and it was like, this is dog shit. <laughs> the NES <version. laughs> oh man. Uh, yeah, like arcade games. Yeah, Millipede and all that stuff. River Raid. Oh, space Invaders. Space Invaders. Uh, yeah, proper Space Invaders. Although I played uh, Super Combat. Space Invaders on the Master System a lot more. <laughs> okay. Because it was really nice. <laughs> wow. That's uh... all, all stuff you can just play on archive.org and not yeah. have to in your browser. give Atari any, on your any Raspberry money. Pi or on your browser. Yeah, in your on, on your phone that you have next to you <laughs> right now. It can it can run all the Atari games <laughs> at once simultaneously and still have memory and CPU to spare. Not the same. Bro. Not in the browser though. 
Yeah. The the browser is just going to suck up all of the rest. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, that's just mobile Chrome for you, though. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for hanging out with us. You've been watching uh, some of the brave, brave penguin nuts uh, during the live stream. We made it. We're gonna we're gonna try to put uh, the SS nightmare train back into the station. I don't know why a train flies, but it does. So, ladies it's, and gentlemen. It's like that train from Back to the Future, except, like, less... Yeah, it catches on fire and falls yeah, off the tracks. Yeah, that yeah, one. Something yeah, something like that. 100%. On that bombshell, man. Let's cue the music. Get out of here while we can. If you want to get in touch with me, easy to do that. I'm in our Discord 24-7, just at Vin over there, uh, in IRC, in Twitch. All of our stuff's bridged together in the live channel. I'll definitely see it. Um, holler at me on Twitter, at Vinstone still kicking around there and if you're on mastodon i'm just at vin at mast.linuxgamecast.com all that fun stuff i'm jordan your favorite hollowed out animato- animatronic animatonic husk. animatonic an and anime. animatronic if you drink the animatonic you won't become <laughs> animatronic I'll, let me tell you uh you can hear me sing my creepy hollowed out animatronic song at the burning fool on twitter or at frojo at mast.linuxgamecast.com on mastodon don't fist robots. Do well, it. But, <laughs> <laughs> if you'd uh, like to play Fallout New Vegas and get into that particular quest, uh, you can let me know what you had Fisto do to you uh, at an accounted for on Twitter. I mean, I know I have some stories. Not really. <laughs> let's, uh, let's let's hit the credit button and see what can't, happens. Can't Fisto, Jedi Master. Wrong button. There we go. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll get it eventually. It's the, it's the it's the old personitis. <laughs> well, speaking speaking of Kit Fisto, we got to bring up our Star Wars credits. We got to thank our advisors, Omegas. We got Artharon. Uh, we got our executive producers, uh, Barb Ramp, Scott Michaud, Atomic Ass, Mike G, Drummer, Kohaku Pebble, Tomash Hakim, David. We got our Chicago Kicksass tier, Super Desto, Empty, and Glorious Eggroll, and Blast Blah. And Gash our sea monsters. <laughs> Gazentai. Uh, Renault LePage. Rider X Machina. Reggie Veritanuda. Justin Nub and Darkwing System. T. Dunzing. Joe Ogi One. Kyrillo and Fute. Death Notes. Nova K. Basil. Chad Romero. Marcin. Rene. Leonardo. Dak. Kim Smashley. Chris. Stephen. Joe. Benjamin. Doom. Tube. Wad. Stephen. Dirty Team. Back. Game of Tron. Dodger. Santhrus Gaming. Row. Turnover. Inbox Dogs. Fine. Oil of Hope. Jalad. Alex. And Aromatic. Deville. We got the Chairlings, Schmesselism, North Ranger, Chrissy, Chrissy Walker, AJ, Lord Maka, <laughs> Douglas, Ramzalada, Thomas T, Stevie, Zeno, and his Paradox, H, Monica, <laughs> Biatko, Despex, and Replay Gaming PT. No one to think of over fine upstanding cannibals. Carl, Mike, Arthur, and Lennox New, Alias, Noctilus, John, Eshev, Game underscore Mo underscore Tron, you know it, DS and Joe, and Aromatic, Deep. So smelly. There's only so many ways to mispronounce that. Yes. <laughs> but Ladies we'll, we'll explore all of them. Tune in next week for more. <laughs> Thanks for rocking with us, and we'll see you next week. Dynafire. Hey! We made it. We lived. We lived, bitch. Five dudes.